face to me. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Doug Blumeyer, and uh, I've been doing, I've been tinkering with VR ideas since uh, the early 2000s when I worked at Stanford's VR lab. Uh, my talk's been cut down for time, so uh, I'd love to ease into this, but basically, I named some VR things uh, I'd love to tell you about as many of them as I can. So, let's get going. Uh, okay, uh, so. Storchen. Uh, this is a cool VR effect. If you want to try Storchen, just get the Google Cardboard app and go to the exhibits feature. Basically, you've got a museum artifact floating out in empty space in front of you. Uh, if you turn away, uh, instead of it going off the side of your field of view like an object in normal reality would, instead it stays perfectly centered in your field of view, but it rotates so you get a different angle on it. You, the subject, don't rotate. Instead, it, the object, does. Uh, hence, subject to object rotation transfer. Stored. Uh, uh, now, this effect only really works in empty space. If there was a background, I really have no idea what would happen with it. Uh, now, if your application has a need for examining an object from any conceivable angle, this can be a surprisingly intuitive and effective means to do that. Uh, okay, epikinetic. This means as a side effect of motion. Uh, let me illustrate by example. In this game, super hot, time only moves when you move. That's epikinetic time. Uh, Total Cinema 360 has a demo where the soundscape you're surrounded by changes depending on where you turn. Uh, so the visual field is divided into three sections. When you're facing the rock concert, all you hear around you is rock music. Even though you know, when you look over here, you're going to see a nature vista, and at that time, nature will be all you hear all around you. So that's an example of epikinetic sound. Uh, and finally, uh, in Sightline the Chair, anything can change when you're not looking. At one point, you're trapped in a room with no doors or windows, and the more frantically you look around, the more rapidly the walls close in without you ever seeing them move. So that's epikinetic action. And in first person, embodied VR, when it's your body's movement which is causing these effects beyond mere motion, that's where epikinesis gets really powerful. Uh, be held, as in, I beheld the glory of Godzilla, but in situations where you might normally see the word handheld. Uh, so this describes footage uh, that you might see uploaded to YouTube, uh, uh, where someone's recorded their experience in VR. Uh, I don't think that head held is quite the right word for this, I think that's better for describing what we've been seeing for many years now, people strapping GoPros to their foreheads and uh, recording themselves going base jumping or whatever. Um, I know it's off by just a few inches, but I think it makes a huge difference when you know what you're watching was beheld by someone with their own eyes. Uh, and so watch line, this is related to beheld. Uh, so for a given immersive film, uh, there are an infinite number of possible watch lines through it. A watch line being one person's beheld footage, uh, a recording of their viewing it through from start to finish. Um, now each time this person watches, they produce a new unique watch line. You can't watch the same, or you can't watch an immersive film the same way twice. Uh, and depending on the field of view, you can only see maybe something like 20% of the total image at a time, so you might have to watch it through a dozen times before you even can see everything. Uh, so we're already starting to see a culture of watch line sharing amongst fans, uh, and I think we'll see watch lines become an art unto themselves. I'll skip this one. Okay. Uh, Finestrograph. The roots of this word combine to mean writing in windows. Uh, so inside VR, virtual movie screens can do some amazing things. Fenestrography is where it works like a magic window into the story world. Uh, it stays fixed on the wall in your virtual space, but jumps around in space and scale uh, on the story world. So story objects can peek out into your space and you can peek into theirs. So you get that shared space, three-dimensional physicality of immersive film, but you keep a frame on it so you can still basically compose shots and edit sequences together like you're more familiar with in traditional film. 
uh, I first came across a Fenestra graph in the VR demo from Ashes, which features a TV set that you don't watch images on, but inside of. Okay, last one, Molger. Uh, so this is a cool new VR artistic medium. If you've played with Tilt Brush or Quill, then you've made Molger. If you haven't, basically it's just drawing magically floating lines in space. It's a cross between sketching and sculpting, but 100% its own thing and never before seen. It's volumetric like sculpture, but consisting of loose, open, discontinuous lines like a sketch. Uh, the word Molger comes from the Latin mulcio, to stroke, as in a uh, pencil stroke of a sketch, or as one would stroke the surfaces of a form while sculpting it. Uh, Dear Angelica is uh, the first work I've seen which animates Molger, and thus I would say it qualifies as an animulger. Uh Okay, that's it. Thank you.